The race for the humanoid robot revolution just took a major leap forward for everyone, but specifically for one robot that I consider to be in the lead. Humanoid robots are destined to change the human economy and they will do so very soon. The big question is when will these mechanical helpers, maybe these human worker replacements, actually come to scale and change everything we know about blue collar work and everything we see out there. We are talking about mechanics. We are talking about agricultural work. We are maybe even talking about nurses. We are talking about mining. We are talking about everything you can imagine that humans physically do. Because the promise of the humanoid robot revolution is we will never have to do these chores and we will never have to do manual labor again. And of course, if that becomes true, the upside will be unlimited. Not just the $25 trillion human labor market, but by dropping the prices and putting robots to work that don't shy away from anything risky or exhausting, we would massively expand this entire market and maybe even ignite an era of universal abundance. I'm not telling you anything new probably, and you know all these things. The big question is, did anything change today? Did anything change yesterday? The answer is yes, it did. It did in a very big way. I want to share a video with you from Tesla. And what you see here is the humanoid robot Optimus by Tesla. You might think this is CGI. You might think, is that video fake? But it's not. This is the Tesla robot on camera shared by Elon Musk running. And we have never seen that before. Not just running, but in a very human-like chain of movement. And when you look up very close, we can zoom into this video, try to zoom it in a little bit. Can we zoom? No, <clears throat> too bad. But you see, look at the feet. When we slow this down, you see that the feet are actually also becoming real feet. See, they have toes and they actually have the movement that reflects the real human movement, which enables Optimus now to move much more human-like. And that is a big deal. I have said for quite a while that I think the lack of updates we hear from Tesla and Optimus is not a sign that nothing is happening, but indeed the opposite. Because what I showed a couple of weeks ago is that Tesla is actually preparing in China a production line with their suppliers. The suppliers that supply the hands, the little things and movement parts that go into these robots, the actuators, if you want to know the technical details, where you need to prepare the suppliers, the supply chains a year and more in advance. And we know that Tesla, what has been leaked from Chinese suppliers, is actually preparing a 70,000 to potentially 150,000 robots per year manufacturing capacity in China right now that they are actually nailing down the contract and paying these guys, which if you know anything about capitalism means this is actually happening. This is a commitment. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. So what is happening is suddenly a new rush of progress. We see that things are happening that everyone forgot to focus about. We have seen a lot of progress on FSD, on autonomous vehicles recently, also by Tesla. And that's what everyone is focusing on. But this year is the second story of Tesla that I think people don't have on the radar. Maybe you're saying, Joe, are you crazy? Everyone has Optimus on the radar. But I mean something different. I mean, no one has Optimus on the radar as a short term, mid term, as a 12 months outlook revenue driver in earnest. And the more I'm looking at everything that's happening, the industry and everything, the more I think, and I said this multiple times, but the more I think 2026 could be already the year where Optimus sees its first big breakthrough and is being manufactured in the tens of thousands, including commercial customers and getting ready to ramp to a million of these things way before 2030. That is my projection was 2030 and Elon's projections was also 2030 for the first million produced. I think this will be vastly accelerated. And if that is true, it's going to be very interesting. Now, I want to share also more commentary on something very remarkable. I shared it on X and this is what this is all about. Someone basically shared this post and said, look, what's so special about 
Tesla Optimus up here, and then Atlas by, I think, Boston Dynamics on the bottom. He can do the same thing as the Tesla Optimus robot, right? They're both running, they both look very human-like. And I made a very important point, I think very important, for everyone who's watching to understand what the difference is between all these science projects and these other companies and Tesla. And while you don't need to be a Tesla fan to understand that, there's one fundamental difference between these. You can't compare one to the other. That's what I wrote. Tesla is a reality engineering company. Boston Dynamics is a science project like Waymo, the self-driving cars. Progress in science projects is meaningless because they are inherently set up for failure. Their fundamental design as organizations cannot work. Reality engineering organizations are fundamentally set up for success which means every progress vector contributes to the total vector, which points to a functioning future state. That's why we are so excited about every piece of progress in Tesla, but not in the failing organizations. So let me explain what I meant with this, because this is actually very important if you're interested in the future of technology, the future of AGI, and also the future of these humanoid robots. What I meant with a reality engineering organization, reality engineering company, as opposed to what I call a science project, is the following. If you design a robot like Boston Dynamics, many Chinese companies too do, figure one and so on and so forth, then normally you have a bunch of scientists and engineers, a bunch of project managers who say, oh, let's create this robot and let's make it do party tricks. Let's make it run. Let's make it use a hand. Let's make it empty a washing machine, right? That is how the entire organization works. Maybe the organization says, oh, you know what, BMW or Amazon wants to rent one of our robots to do some piloting projects. Let's design a robot for that. And that is literally it. That is the plan. That is why it's a science project. It has a very specific goal and it works towards this goal and tries to deliver this robot. What is, to juxtapose that, what is a reality engineering organization? Well, these reality engineering organizations are, for example, Tesla, or for example, SpaceX, but also other companies, not every reality engineering company is owned by Elon. Why did I invent that term reality engineers? Because a reality engineer is not interested in engineering a robot. They're not interested in engineering a rocket, and they're not interested in engineering a self-driving car. What instead a reality engineer is interested in is to engineer a future reality, okay? A future reality that contains and unlocks huge value for humanity and also huge economic value. And economic value comes from human value, providing something to people that people want. No one wants a self-driving car. No one wants a robot. And no one wants a rocket. You know why? Because people want to go from A to B. And they want to do so cheaper. And they want to do so whenever they want. People don't want robots. They want to have human laborers that do stuff for them. They want to have their washing machine emptied. They want to have their dishes cleaned. They want to have their factories staffed. They want to have more products per time at lower costs. That is what they want. People don't want rockets. No one is going to pay a dime for a rocket. People want orbital lift capability. People want to have lunar lift capability. They want to have it fast, reliable, and they want to have it cheap. It's always the same thing. They want something. They want it reliable, safe, and cheap. Now, Maybe you ask, Joe, isn't that what Boston Dynamics tries to do? No, no, they don't. When you look at the Atlas project or the Waymo project, these projects are inherently designed in a way that makes them a science project in the sense that success is not a possible outcome. What do I mean by that? If you have LiDAR sensors on Waymos, if you have robots that use pieces, software, and hardware that is not scalable, that has no supply chain plan, that use actuators you can't actually order or scale, that has a cost structure that is simply not deliverable, that is designed this robot in a way that cannot be even converted into an effective cost structure. That means the people who design these things are geeks, engineers and scientists who work on science projects, not on a future reality. If you work on a future reality and you want to engineer that reality, you need to engineer every singular vector that drives that reality. And most of these vectors are not directly included or part of the gadget, the actual robot. Most of the decisive vectors have to do with supply chains, with risk, with financial engineering, 
with communication, with business scenarios. All of these things need to be engineered. And then in the end, the actual robot has to fit into that new reality, has to match all these components of reality that you engineered first or in parallel. And so that robot you're creating needs to use the right actuators, the right hands, the right movements, the right software that is compatible with your other engineering vectors, most of them invisible, most of them of organizational or financial or mathematic or human behavioral pattern nature. A good reality engineer will take all of that into consideration and ask one question. Am I on a path with all my components, including the hardware components of the robot, that this can click into a master plan of that future? That is why we are so much more excited as people who study this stuff and put their money where their mouth is when we see this robot versus this robot. For a beginner, for someone who doesn't have anything at stake, for someone who's just geeking out, these robots look very much alike. It's like, oh, this robot can run, this robot can run, right? But for those in the know, we understand Boston Dynamics has a history of failure, of not getting shit done. Same with Google, for example. Google is a one-trick pony. They have failed and failed and failed again on all kinds of projects they have launched. Google Plus, Google Wave, Google all kinds of things. Fail, 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 fail. They just got lucky that they have a singular product that produces endless amounts of cash, which is search, so their failure didn't matter. Tesla, on the other side, have launched a revolutionary EV. Then Elon has launched a self-landing rocket. Then Elon has launched Neuralink. So he, and he has bought and fixed X. So Elon has a track record of doing very new things and nailing them because he uses reality engineering very effectively. That is the difference. This robot on top in our minds who are experts in this field and analysts, we look at this and we realize we are so excited about this robot running. We are so not excited about this robot running because we know this robot above is surrounded by parallel engineered vectors of an entirely new reality that are all coming together, that are all coming together into a world where we can deploy thousands and tens of thousands and a hundred of thousands of these robots that they can go into highly economically valuable contexts and that they can actually change the world and reality we live in. And in that context, that robot being able to run makes that robot on top a billion times more fascinating and valuable than the robot on the bottom because that robot looks good, but it's lacking all reality engineering vectors that would make this thing a success outside the running. In other words, here you see an entire reality being engineered. Here you see a science project. Here you see the entire reality of humanoid robots coming running towards us much faster than people expected while all the other components equally quickly come together. And that, that is why I'm very excited. And then we see these things to wrap this up. We also see the US government plans to accelerate US robotics development that came out, came out today. Uh, that Secretary Howard Lutnick said he's all in on accelerating the sector's development, US robotics. And we know how close Elon is now again with the Trump administration. And I'm sure we will see some interesting surprises you don't need to be a rocket scientist like Elon. You just need to be the president of the United States or the secretary of commerce to understand accelerating this, putting some government money behind it is probably a very good idea if you want to win and you're the United States. You want to foster and accelerate companies like Tesla, but also many other cool companies on robotics and drones and all these things. So I think we will see some additional boosts and upside surprises coming here from the government that will benefit mostly Tesla. And so all of that, I don't know what the reason is, but the stock, of course, of Tesla is going through the roof today, actually independent of the NASDAQ. When you look at the NASDAQ, we are not up too much. We are only up 0.34%, but Tesla is up 4%, very nice. Uh, so maybe that's because of this video. Maybe it's because people realize the robots are coming too. Maybe it's because of FSD in Europe expanding, who knows? But for us today, the insight is the robots are leaping forward at a crazy speed and surprises are coming very, very quickly. So I hope that was interesting. Stay tuned. The AGI revolution is here. Things will happen faster than many expect. And 2026 
is probably the year where we see major, major, major inflection points on AGI, on robots, on autonomous driving in a fascinating and huge way. Stay tuned. I hope that was helpful and see you tomorrow.